Hello, welcome to Tennessee's at home learning series for math. Today's lesson is for all our sixth graders out there, though all children are welcome to tune in. This lesson is the 10th in our series. My name is Reggie Carruth and I'm assistant principal here in Tennessee schools and I'm excited to be your classroom teacher today. Welcome to my virtual classroom. If you didn't see any of our previous lessons, you can find it on the Tennessee Department of Education's website at www.tn.gov forward slash education. You can still tune in to today's lesson, but it may be more fun to go back and look at previous lessons since we'll be talking about things previously learned today. All right, so today we'll be learning about dividing fractions by fractions, including mixed numbers in math. Before we get started, to participate fully in our lesson today, you'll need paper and pencil in the surface to write on. If you have graph paper, please use it. Y'all ready? Let's begin. All right, first students, I want you to try this problem to get your brain engaged. It says, Mr. Bernstein will cut eight pies into pieces that are one sixth of the whole. After he cuts eight pies, how many pieces will Mr. Bernstein have? Again, I want you to do this to get those brains going and activated for today's lesson. Again, Mr. Bernstein will cut eight pies into pieces that are one-sixth of the whole. After he cuts the eight pies, how many pieces will Mr. Bernstein have? All right, so let's see how we can solve this. Let's find out what the problem is asking us to find. We know that Mr. Bernstein has eight pies and he's cutting them into a sixth of the whole pie. We're now looking to see how many pieces does he have. To figure this out, we can look at this in several ways. I'm going to show you two. I'm going to draw a model. So I know Mr. Bernstein will cut this up into has eight pies and he cuts them up into a six. I'm gonna cut all of mine pies into a six. So let me divide them up to my six. All right, there's a pie cut into six. Here's another one. Another one. Another one. Good job. And remember, our models don't have to be perfect. They just got to make sure that they tell what the problem is asking and saying. All right, so now that this is, all my eight pies are cut up into six, how many total pieces do I have? I can count all of my pieces up. And I know every pie is cut up into eight, I mean, to six pieces, and there's eight pies. So that's six times eight, which should give me 48 pieces. Good job. Let's look at this another way. I also can write a math problem to go with it. So for my division problem, I know I have eight pies and I'm doing it into six pieces of a pie. What do we need to do to solve this problem? Right, I can do this by multiplying by the reciprocal. You remember this from your previous lesson? All right, so I know I have eight. I'm now doing multiplying by the reciprocal. Who can remember what the reciprocal is? Correct, so this one, the reciprocal will be six over one. And since this is a fraction, I like to work when I multiply work with two fractions. Now I can multiply my denominators, which is one, and my numerators, which is going to give me 48 over one, or 48 pieces. Good job. Let's look at one more problem together like this. Students, I want you to write this problem on your paper. Our 
first, let's use a visual model with fraction bars. If you have a graph paper, it will help you be able to create this model a little bit more accurately. But if you don't, I just want you to try your best. So I'm going to use fraction bars to model this. So here are my fraction bars. I have a whole for my one. I'm going to use my thirds. And then I'm going to throw on my six. So now this fraction model, we can look and see how many six are in two thirds. Well, looking at this, I know that there are two six in one third. So there are four six into two thirds. So it should be four. Good job. Let's do this another way. How about we dig into some of these previous knowledge from our previous lessons? How about we do this as, let's say, common denominators? So same thing, but I'm going to solve using common denominators. So looking at this problem, I'm going to rewrite it. Eh, I'll just work off this one. Two thirds divided by one six. What denominator do we I can create the have in common? Correct. I can turn my thirds into a six by multiplying it by two. Remember, whatever I do to my denominator, I do to my numerator to make that equivalent fraction. So two times two is four. Two times three is six to get us four six divided by one six. Are our units the same? Are our denominators the same? Yes, for both of them we have six. So I can cross those out. And now I'm just doing four divided by one. Because my units were the same. Four divided by one equals four. So I got the same answer. Let's look at it one more way. How about us doing the reciprocal? The same problem. I want us to do the reciprocal. So I have two thirds divided by one six. Do my reciprocal because I want us to use multiplication. So I'm going to multiply. What's the reciprocal of one six? Correct. Six over one. So now I can multiply my numerators. Six times two is going to give me 12. Three times one is going to give me three. And I know that 12 thirds is equivalent to four as well. Well, that was a lot of different ways that we just solved this problem, but we got to the same answer. So now let's apply this knowledge to solve some word problems. So we're going to take everything we've learned this week. Now let's apply it to some word problems. You ready? Here's your word problem. This says Sarah used this recipe to make the trail mix. She put the trail mix in small bags. Each bag holds one and one fourth cup. How many bags does Sarah fill? Wow, that's a lot to think about for this problem. We have to interpret what the problem is asking us to find. What information do we know? Correct. We know that trail mix includes two and a half cups of almond, three fourths cup of dried cherries, two and one fourth cup of walnuts, and three fourths cup of raisin. We'll need to find the total number of cups in one recipe. Then we can divide the total number by one and one fourth cup since each bag holds that amount. So first, let's find out the total amount of one bag. So here's what we know we have from each of these in our trail mix. So I know I have two and one half plus three fourths plus two and one fourth plus three fourths. Let's start by adding 
three fourths and one fourth together to get one whole. So I know if I were to add three fourths and one fourth together, that's going to give me one whole plus the two. That's going to be three. I'm going to bring everything else down. I'm going to bring down my three fourths plus my two and a half. Good job. You still with me? All right, let's keep going. Now let's use fourths as our common denominator to make one half to two fourths. So common denominator, I'm going to turn one half to two fourths. So I'll, to turn this to four, I have to multiply this by two. Now multiply this by two. That's going to leave me with two and two fourths plus three plus three fourths. So now since my common denominators, I can add these all together. I'm going to add my two plus my three which is going to give me five plus my two fourths plus my three fourths, which is going to give me going to give me one and one fourth. So now I can add five and one. That's going to give me six and one fourth as an answer. So we have six and one fourths cup in each recipe. Ooh, that was a lot. So now back to what the problem asks us. Let's see how many bags can Sarah fill. So I know she can do six and one fourth because we just solved that. And I'm going to divide that into how much each bag holds, which is one and one fourth. So Let's rewrite this problem using common denominators in improper fractions. So that's going to give me 25 fourths divided by 5 fourths. So now we have common denominators in improper fractions. So now are my denominators the same? Yes, yeah, so my denominator units are the same. So that means I can just divide my numerators. So I'm going to rewrite that as 25 divided by 5, which is going to give me what, you all? 5. So she can do 5 bags for each recipe. Ooh, we got it. Y'all good? Let's look at another example. Our next example. It says a new nature trail is eight tenths mile long. Our park ranger divides the trail into four equal sections. How long is each section of the trail? Solve this problem in at least two ways. So let me give you a chance to write that down. And you're going to solve this problem in at least two ways. All right, so let's do start by using a visual model. So I'm going to use a fraction bar. Remember, again, our models don't have to be perfect. It just helps us see what the problem is asking. And now I'm going to break this up into tenths. 10 pieces. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Why did I break it up into 10 pieces? Because I know of that 10th is there. So now I'm going to shade 8 tenths of this problem. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I know my shaded area represents the eight tenths for the trail. Stay with me? All right, so each of these again represents a tenth. So 
So now I know from the problem, the park ranger divides the trail into four equal sections. So here's one section, two section, three section, and four equal sections. So now the problem wants to know how long is each section? So how long is this section? Correct. This section is two tenths of a mile. Or an equivalent fraction to that to bring it down is one fifth mile. Good job. I want to see you solve it another way. Another way that I'm going to solve this is I'm going to use multiplying by the reciprocal. So same thing, I'm going to take the information that I know from my problem. I got 8 tenths divided into 4. So I'm bringing down my 8 tenths, and I know I'm multiplying by the reciprocal. What's the reciprocal of 4? Correct, 1 fourth. So now I'm ready to multiply. 8 times 1 is going to give me 8 as my numerator. 10 times 4 is going to give me 40 as my denominator. And 8 over 40 is equivalent to 1 fifth of a mile. Good job. This is two ways that we've solved this, and we still got the same answer. We've used visuals, we use common denominators, and we even practice multiplying fractions by their reciprocal. So let's, let's look at a couple more problems. You can choose how you want to solve it. You can solve it by using a visual model, common denominators, or multiplying by the reciprocal. So here's our next problem, our next word problem. This says Estella has 10 feet cubed of soil. She uses three and a half feet cubed in her garden. She uses the rest of the soil for tomato plants. She needs three fourths feet cubed of soil for each tomato plant. How many tomato plants can she plant? See, that's a lot of planting, huh? <laughs> All right, so I want you to start solving it. You can use whichever visual model you want. Think about what you know. All right, so thinking about what you know, let's compare your thoughts with my thoughts. So I know that Estella has 10 feet cubed of soil. But she has already used three and a half feet in her garden. She also needs three fourths feet cubed of soil for each tomato. We need to figure out how many tomato plants she can plant. So that's all the information we got. So think about the steps you need to take to solve the problem. What do you, we need to do first? You're right, we need to subtract the amount she has already used from the garden. So I know I have 10, and I need to subtract the amount she already used, which is three halves from each other. 10 minus three is gonna give me six halves is what we're working with. That's how much she has left for her tomato plants. Now what do we need to do? Correct, we need to divide six halves by three fourths. We need to divide six halves by three fourths. Finish solving this problem, we'll discuss together. Remember, you can use whichever way you need to, to solve. Okay, so let's check our work. I'm gonna use multiplying by the reciprocal, but if you did another way, that's fine too. 
So I know I have six halves divided by three fourths. I'll use another color. I'm going to multiply the reciprocals. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change my mixed number to an improper fraction. So that's going to be 13 halves divided by 3 fourths. I know I'm multiplying by the reciprocal, so I have 3 halves multiply. What's the reciprocal of 3 fourths? Good job, 4 thirds. So now I can multiply across my numerators and my denominators. 13 times 4 is going to give me 52. 2 times 3 is going to give me 6. Or since I know that doesn't go in evenly, I can write a mixed number. So that is 8 and 4, 6. Is that the same thing you got? So how many plants can she plant? You're right. She can only plant eight plants. She doesn't have enough to of soil to cover, cover nine because we know she has this amount which is eight and four, six, is not nine. So the most amount of plants she can plant is eight. In this situation, there's no remainder needed. We'll do one more problem together. This time, I give you the problem, and I want you to solve it by yourself. I want you to solve this problem by yourself. Tiana uses one and three-fifths ounce of detergent for each load of laundry. How many full loads of laundry can she do with 100 ounces of detergent? All right, let's start. get started, and I'll be back to check with you. Keep going. I want you to pull out all the information you know. Remember, if you're using a visual model, it doesn't have to be perfect. It just needs to be so you can visually see what the problem is asking you to do to get your answer. Keep going, you're almost there. We'll compare answers here in a second. Remember, you can choose which way you want to solve this problem. Guys, almost finished. Good. All right. So let's check your work. Remember, if you solved it a different way than I did, that's fine. We just want to make sure we're getting to the same answer. Kind of like some of our previous problems when we solved them multiple ways, we saw that we got the same result. So I'm going to do, hmm, I guess the one I've been using is multiplying by the reciprocal. So I know that I'm going to have to Take 100 ounces, and I'm going to divide it by 1 and 3 fifths ounce. That's what I know from my problem to get how many loads of laundry Tiana can do. So I have 100 divided by 1 and 3 fifths. So the first thing, since I'm multiplying by the reciprocal, I want to get rid of this and turn it into an improper fraction. So I'm bringing down my 100. This as an improper fraction is what? Correct. Eight fifths. So now I'm ready to multiply by the reciprocal because I'm going to use a reciprocal. If you did common denominators, that's fine. If you use a visual model, that's fine as well. So I'm going to multiply 
100 by the reciprocal of 8 fifths. What is the reciprocal of 8 fifths? You got it. 5 eighths. So now, what do I do now? Remember, I like working with fractions, so I'm going to turn this 100 to a fraction. What is 100 as a fraction or in fraction form? It's 100 over 1. So am I ready now to start multiplying? Yes, I can start multiplying my numerators and my denominators. So my numerators, 100 times 5 is going to give me what? 500. My denominators, 1 times 8 is going to give me what? 500 over 8. Or I can simplify this down a little bit more and write it as a mixed number, 62 and 1 half ounces is what Tiana can use, how many loads she can make. That was a lot. So let's make sure we answered the question. How many loads of laundry, again, can Tiana make or do? Correct. She can do 62 loads. Again, in this case, like our previous one, a remainder is not needed because she. this is just saying she can do a half a load if she wanted to. But we're not going to do half loads. We're just saying how many full loads, like the problem said, can she do? And she can do 62 full loads. I know that was a lot, y'all. But thank y'all for working with me through this problem. How did you solve it? Did you use a visual model? Did you use common denominators? Hopefully you got to the same answer as we did. Great work. Today we reviewed dividing fractions by fractions. I hope you're seeing some connections to models using common denominators and multiplication when we divide. You sure did do a great job. After the video, you'll have some problems to practice on your own. You can find these problems at www.tn.gov forward slash education. Good luck and do your best. I enjoyed learning how to divide fractions by fractions with you all today. We can draw visual models, find common denominators, or multiply by the reciprocal if you want to. Thank you for inviting me into your home. I look forward to working with you again and tuning in to Tennessee's at-home learning series. See you later.